Hello, everyone. Hello, Pedro Junqueira. Hello, Fernando Ronick. Welcome to Azureta. Oh, hey, George. Thanks for having me. And today we have we will talk about the Azure Cognitive Services Computer Vision with Pedro Junqueira. He has a very cool demo in Python, and I helped him to make a pipeline to deploy using Terraform three musketeers, and it's very easy. Just You'll see so Let's go, Pedro. Yes. Uh, hi, Fernando. Hi, George. Uh, I'm going to first, uh, I'm going to explain uh, briefly what is Cognitive Services. Uh, it's a service uh, in Azure uh, for um, not only computer vision that I'm going to demonstrate today, but they also have um, language. Uh, speech and for decision maker anomaly detection. So we're going to present basically focus on Azure Cognitive Services and out of the Cognitive Services I picked uh, Azure Computer Vision uh, which is a machine learning um, image uh, an analyzer that uh, Azure offer as a service and how it works. So basically uh, I built an application that runs in Python Flask, uh, where this application takes an image uh, of the user. Uh, and then, so what the application does is it sends this picture to Azure Cognitive Services. And on the API, for example, I can ask many um, things to analyze in this image. You can ask to analyze the, what object there is in the image. Uh, to search for brands, which is the example of the app. And Azure Cognitive Services return a response on this API with all the data of the analysis. For example, for brand, uh, it will return what brands were recognized, if any, what's the confidence uh, of that brand to be recognized, where in the image that brand is. Uh, and then you can get the information and use on your application or to collect data that you are trying to uh, analyze images. So what's the advantage of using cognitive services compared to uh, not having it? If you don't have it, you have to develop from scratch a machine learning model, and that would require uh, data science skills. So what Azure does then is offer this already packaged as a service. So that's that's what, um, what what's that advantage. So what I'm going to do now um, is to demo a little bit the code on how it is easy. So if you go on the web, just going to show the documentation. If you go on the computer vision, um, and get the documentation of that. So you can have many um, SDKs for, in my case, it's Python. So let me just go. Uh, where it is? It's here. Okay. So the code is pretty simple. Uh, you just need to install the Azure Computer Vision Library, which I've already done. And you need to create like an object contact uh, connecting to your instance. In my case, I've already created one. So this is the computer vision that I've created. So, and once you, once you create like a computer vision instance in Azure, there are two things uh, that you need to pass into the um, the application: the key, your subscription key, and an endpoint where you're gonna do the uh, HTTP request. So once you do that, so I'm going to to show the code. Um, just for demonstration purposes, I'm putting here on my code, uh, and in this example here. I'm going to detect an uh, object in an image. So I'm going to show you uh, the image that I'm 
I'm detecting, which is that one. Oh my gosh, that's why, Pedro, I put my soccer shirt here. I knew that you're going to show like a Diego Maradona. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a photo like from the internet. What I need to pass is the, the image. And what I'm what this Python code does is is give that image to the um, to the API, and then I render uh, a boxes where it um, where it det detected objects. So I'm just gonna activate the uh, this environment uh, where I am now. So. Forgot to activate, yeah. And then I'm if I'm running that script, which is in the Pedro, your sound is very low. Yeah, no, I'm I think it because I'm not holding the uh, the file is the text object. I think I saw. Yeah. So I'm gonna run that. Okay, you you loading some uh, environment variables there with some your environment variable settings, then you running your code. Yeah, uh, actually, yeah, actually, this is the Python virtual environment, right? Yeah, no, this is this. Yeah, what I'm doing here, I'm just doing a demo of a example from the um, Azure uh, website, and yep. then I create that image. So what happened here in this code is I gave this URL and then and saying to me, can you recognize in this image uh, objects? And Azure gave me those two objects that was recognized, a person and a soccer ball. And then with that image, I could render that, that image with the location in the image by pixel where it was. So everything is done by Azure. You just need to pass the image and what you want to be analyzed in this image. I'll give you other examples um, from the Azure. So this one is a very cool one. So if I go here, uh, I've got this image here. I'm just going to show that and then which is that one. Not this one. Well, let's get this one. So uh, this image are basketball players. So let's get the URL and then put on these in this code. Save. But this one is not going to return. I'm just going to show the, the data that it will return. This one, for example, will detect different object on this image. So this file is the quick start file. Let's run it. So it, it, detect, it, it detected several objects in this image. So one, two, three, four, five. So if I do the same image on that other code, which you render the image, let's see. On this one. So Pedro means that they always return for you like a rectangle or like a square yeah, position. This, yeah, exactly. Yeah. For example, here it returns the object. In this other piece of code, I can render that into an image. For example, so it yep. says where the person was. Was one person here? A person here? A sports ball? Another person there? Even it's a bit blurred. It could detect that person. So with this uh, demonstration, let's now um, demonstrate the application that I developed and Fernando helped me to do the CI/CD 
uh, to deploy in Azure. And then that's in another um, GitHub repo. What we're going to do is we're going to clone this repo. And then first we're going to test it locally. And then after we demonstrate that it's working locally, running on lo uh, on localhost, we are going to deploy that into a Azure Container Instancy, where it's going to expose a um, a URL where everyone can test it. And then I, I I even can ask George or Fernando to do that from from their place because we are in different places. I'm in Fernando in Adelaide, and uh, George is in Melbourne. So let's do it. So let me go back to my terminal. Yeah, and then I'm going to go to GitHub. I'm going to clone this. Uh, all Can you show in your screen, please, Pedro, because you are seeing the presentation. Uh, yeah, let me just, I think the presentation is still on. Can you see now? No, we are seeing the presentation. Oh, now, yes, we can see. Yeah, so I'm here on GitHub uh, on Fernando's repo that we are uh, sharing this repository. I'm now cloning it into my Linux machine, Windows. Uh, Pedro, I think you forgot to go inside the folder, but that's okay. Yeah, it's okay. No, no, no. I'm going to do this. Thank you, Fernando. I always forget this. Uh, yeah. So just uh, quickly uh, run on this uh, repository. Right. So on the root repository, we have... Um, uh, so we have, we have. Uh, I'm using an approach that's called Three Musketeers. That we have like a make file, Docker compose, and only Docker installed. That uh, when you do like it, uh, in this approach, we can use the CI/CD pipelining, like Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions or any tool you want. It's very easy to change. Just to see, show the Docker compose file, please, Pedro. So, so the Docker Compose file will load the Azure container, the AZ CLI container as AZ, the GQ, this is like a parser for JSON, only the base key and the Terraform container. The advantage is uh, I'm I'm sticking with this version, so there's all my team can can have the same environment on their machine. There is no problem. The second step is this make file code show, please, Pedro, the make file. And on the make file first, we start with all the variables and go down just to give an example. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. And for instance, here uh, we have go go a little bit up, please, Pedro. A little bit, a little bit. I, oh, go, it's good. For instance, az login. Uh, I'm running the do, the Docker container with az with the command login, use device code, and so on. I'll like we have we have a process to do only uh, make prepare to prepare the environment uh, later we do like a make build to build the docker image and we do a make deploy to publish the container the other thing like we we are deploying the an azure container registry using terraform on this tf acr folder pedro could you show please this a, a tf acr folder on your left right side, yeah, ACR, ACR, the uh, the second one, the second one, no, the ACR, TF, ACR. So look, only main, show, show the main, the main. So show this, the main. Uh, in this main, like the only thing we do here, we create a resource group and we create a container registry. And then we have the TF, ACI. Go to the other main on the TF, ACI folder, please, Pedro. On this, this yeah, yeah, this one. On this, in in this one here, we create go go down a little bit. We create a a Docker container. It's very simple. I'm copying and pasting the um, um, the Azure RM provider help page to do this stuff and go a little bit down. This is the container we load in this lock. We load this container. It's nothing special. And this this is the deployment part. And the code part, the first part, is on the Docker folder. 
code is show please Pedro the Docker folder. And the Docker folder will have a Docker file, show the Docker file. The Docker file will have like a moot stage. First, we only uh, get like the PP requirements, and then we build the image with the minimal requirements from the Linux, from the Debian. It is li the glib, and we copy the files, and we have the application on the source folder inside the Docker. Could you show, please, Pedro? Show your code on so source. Yeah. Uh, this is the Ped Pedro's code, right? Uh, to do the website, if you want to show how it works. Yeah, like we, we have a Flask application. So this is the main um, entry point of the application. So uh, that's gonna the Flask manage the web application routes. So the main route is gonna is the route that you will see that's called upload image. So this route gets the image and sends to to this function that's I created here in this utils.py. So what this function does is pretty much what I demonstrated before. So but I I I've set up this analyze image function to analyze brands. I know we'll see and understand better. But basically what the application does is the route gets the image that, that was uploaded and sends that to Azure as a IO stream and then returns the object with the uh, image information. And then I have the HTML code here uh, where I'm gonna render that into a, a HTML um, and a bit of CSS as well. I'm using um, Bootstrap as well to do the rendering, which makes life much easier for us that are not front-end developers. And the application doesn't look too bad. So let's then, as Fernando said. First, remember to load your environment variables. Yeah. Uh, and so remember to change the prefix name to avoid the name collision. Oh, yes. Let me go there first. Pedro, yeah. just before you start the, you know, for someone watching, maybe it's too many different technologies and just to make sure that if I understood and everyone that's watching understood, we are the main entry point there will be the make file, correct? Okay. Where, the correct file is the deployment tool, right? Yeah, but I'm going to be interacting with the make file, where the make file have some, let's say, functions like prepare, build, test, deploy, and clean. Exactly. Then I'm going to interact with the make file. I ask the make file to do things for me. And the make file is nothing more than you know, a group of instructions. I like a recipe. Like a recipe to do like prepare, build, test, deploy, and clean. And th that's the first thing I'm doing. Then I'm using Docker and you know Docker Compose as part of those recipes of those instructions. One to... sec, George. Sorry, Pedro. Remember to load the variables. Yeah, Sorry, right. George. Yeah. Then I talk with the make file, asking him to do some things, and there are things on those make files that will be using Docker Compose and Docker itself to build your image. Okay, and 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 like. Yeah. And... Yes, exactly. I, the Docker Compose, we I, I'm using this to like a as an internal shortcut to have like a, a, a certain and version of like the Terraform, a certain version of the uh, Azure CLI, and for instance Terraform. We have to stick with one version when we are working in a group because if I'm using 13 and someone else starts to use 14. Uh, I, I I have to up, upgrade my image later to to stay working. So it's better to define like a version and keep this version on the Docker Compose file, and everyone works exactly with the same dependence, right? Yeah, I'm not, not even questioning that. I'm just trying to understand the technology that we're using to build this thing. We call the make file that calls hey, let, Docker let's do Compose, it. We'll Doc, Terraform, and um, and Docker itself. Uh, like... it, it calls ter uh, a Docker container containing Terraform, another Docker container containing GQ, G JQ, and another Docker container uh, with the Azure CLI. Good. Right. So, Pedro, let's start. First, uh, first of a step, yeah, you have to it. create. Just to our public who is watching, the first step, you have to to put these environment variables 
on on the system, right? Yeah. This, this is, is the here. first uh, so which the here. environment variables that needs to be put in the system is the uh, a prefix for your um, is that for resource group? Yes, it's, it's for everything from the names. We, there is, we are, this is a, the resource we are creating in Azure, they should have a unique global name. So because this reason, we, are, we have like a prefix to, to make more difficult to the name you choose is the, you'll be the name, the same name I choose and the record, the deployment fail, right? Yeah. Okay. And then just quickly, let me just. The end point. Yeah, we need to end the point, the subscription. We What's the end point? Go. The end point is in that first step, right? Yeah, uh -huh. the end point is this here from your connect. I've, I've already created like a computer vision here. And then if you go on keys, uh, they will have like the end point here, just copy and paste, and also a subscription key, which you're going to put here, and also the uh, Azure location region that you're going to uh, deploy it. To. In our case, it's Australia East. So let's do this then by uh, doing some. Uh, do, do, do the comments and then you explain what's going on. Make prepare, prepare. So this make prepare. Enter. First thing, it will pull it will pull all Docker containers with the tools we are using. Uh, and I think it will be quick because we have it cached. And the second step, it will be like an Azure login. On AZ login, and let's do the AZ login. Which is pretty much pass that code into a yeah. Connect my account. So back to VS Code. Now, uh, could you increase your terminal, Pedro, please? Click on the arrow up. Yes, oh, awesome. So we got the authentication. Uh, now, right now, I'm crea creating a service principle uh, to grant Terraform authorization to, to build the resource. Right, so we are creating a service principle here. And it takes a little bit longer. Okay, now every time you see this JQ command running, it's because I'm using this to read some variable from the JSON file I created while uh, with the service principle. This service principle is recorded in this file, service principle.json, and I'm using the GQ to, to grab the values. And now, now we are creating the Azure container registry. This is a part of our infrastructure, but the, this is the place where you store the container image. Terraform now is initializing and it will create the, like in, in, in this approach, we are doing the, the make prepare. I'm skipping the Terraform plan. But when I finish this, the, the full pipeline on GitHub Actions, I have, um, when someone opens a pull request to, to change something in this part of the infrastructure, it will run a Terraform plan and it will attach to the pull request, right? But now we are doing, we are simplifying these steps. Okay, Terraform has created, I got these outputs, the ACR name and the resource group name. I also use GQ to, um, to grab to grab these names from the JSON output uh, on the Terraform. And the next step will be to log the local Docker instance. Uh, now I'm getting the credentials to log in, to log in my, my local Docker container. And now my Docker is, is logged. Done. Yeah, beautiful. The last step, I, I'm logged on the Docker, right? Next step is uh, we have to build the container. Yeah, which is make build. Yeah, and just to illustrate it, uh, go open please the make file and show the target and show the target to, uh, make build only only to illustrate or make build is over there is right here. So this is simple. It's just Docker build and tag and the variables Docker login server container name and the tag right. And yeah. as you can see on the terminal, it's built. 
uh, before deploy it, we can test with a make test. Yeah, let's do it. That now it's the fun part. Yeah, make test. Yeah. This make te test will spin up the container locally only to a, to a test. So, now I'm just going on running a local server, as I said. So you can see that we are running the container in port 500, which is the default port for Flask. So basically, it's a web form where I'm going to upload any image. It needs to be either, I think, JPEG, PNG, just to avoid people uh, uploading silly things. So I'm just having an image here of, uh, probably I'll do the iPhone first. So I'm just trying to recognize if the uh, image of iPhones. Click on upload. Apple logo. So if I put upload, so what the app is doing now, it's sending that image to Azure and in Azure is getting back with a response and then there we go. So on this image, this is the original image. So the application did that. It found where there is Apple and said it's Apple brand and this is the confidence in each one of the images. Probably that's one, two, three. I haven't put the um, the ID for it, but should be. One, How two, good three, it's think. working, Pedro? I think we we'll, we can publish it. What do you think? Can you? Yeah, I think so. Let's now publish in Azure. Yeah, Pedro, uh, just just one question there, just to make sure. Uh, Azure Cognitive Service is not returning those these image. It's just returning the position where the brands are, yeah. and you're using some library to draw. Yeah, so OpenCV, uh, it's returning the brand and also the confidence, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Then using like a library on then on his code to do that. Yes, Pedro is using Open OpenCV, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. I think I have. Where is it? Can I just say, just for people that watch, you know, that expect that. Is going to get a image back like we saw before, just the coordinates, and then you have to draw yourself using the library yeah, that you yeah, want. Sure, that's you are correct. It doesn't. This is uh, the drawing of the squares and the brand was me. So what does the um, if you see the code? Yeah, show on the code. It would be interesting to do on the code. Yeah, I'll show the code uh, on this. You choose what it does. Um, so I I pass on this uh, computer vision client analyze image in stream. There are two methods. You can pass the URL, which is the method analyze image. But because I'm using uh, a email like a, a file, I, I make that a IO stream and then I, I send like a buffered image. And then analysis type that I'm passing is brands. So I pass a dictionary of what I would like to analyze and that gets saved in this object called image analysis. Okay? So Pedro, I have a question. Can you change, choose just instead brands to have like objects and you get what type of object it is? Yeah, I think so, but I probably I don't know exactly the the, the string for that. Oh, oh, good. I will try it. I will try it later. Now I'm curious to play with your. Yeah, in this case, I think I think it is. You just said like what type of analysis you want, and then, and then this part of the code I create like a a, a loop. Um. That. Um, yeah, I, I put the brand, so so on the object, I have a um, an instance uh, object here that I'm putting into a dictionary called brands, and then I have a loop that says, if there is no brand, I can return like no brands detected. I haven't put that into the app. Uh, oh, maybe but, on our next version we are we are agile. Yeah, I think I think I think I put it like if there is no yeah. on the route there is there is I think there is a. So it says if it's no brand detected, there may be here. Uh, and then it's a 
go back and then says zero image detected. But anyway, so right, that's I'll what put... George was saying is uh, this Hi, object image analysis is where the data is. So what I'm doing is that I'm looping through all the uh, brands that were detected and then first I draw the rectangle and I get from that same object, I get the rectangle X position, the Y position. And then I, I also put the width and the um, height of the image. And then this is the color. I think it's a red color, 002255. This is a computer vision library. And then I put a text uh, with the brand name. And then I create a dictionary. I think I create a list to store the, the ID of the image, the name of the brand, and the confidence. And then this function returns the image, the encoded image, uh, the process image. So the encoded image is the original image. The process image is the image with the box design, uh, drawing to the image. The brands detected are the brands and the metadata is the metadata that I'm gonna use to uh, do that table at the bottom. And then with that information, I have enough data to render that image and this table here. So that's what the code does. So that's basically it. Let's deploy it now in Azure. So now it's running in localhost. I'm gonna to stop the container first. I do a so Fernando now it's uh, make deploy. Right, let's do the make deploy. Okay, and I will explain what's going on here. Make deploy. We we tell what's happening. Please, just please gonna... maximize. Yeah, do that. So now GQ is grabbing some variables. Now we are pushing the container to the Azure Container Registry. Right, we have the Azure Container Registry. Uh, the while you are waiting, I'll do some comments. I will add like an issue. I'm seeing here now, I know what is the Azure Cognitive account you show me, you are using. Uh, on the next version, instead to use the key, uh, the, the URL, I'll, I'll deploy it on my on my first Terraform script. On this Terraform ACR, I will change for Terraform Prepper and I also deploy the Cognitive service using Terraform, right? Because we don't need this manual process, right? Let's automate everything. So I'm not pushing the container. Put okay, my you're internet push not container. fast, but oh, but it's faster. I worked a lot in this container. This container originally was like 800 megabytes and compressed. Now it's 500 ish in compressed. And the, the libraries required for li for OpenCV are really heavy. I saw almost all, all images uh, from computer visions are like one gig, you know. This is the yeah. this is the real size. And then go, this is uh, the last two layers going. Yeah, it's getting there. So while this is deploying, Pedro, uh, is this this cognitive service computer vision has like a free a free tier? Can I test it for free? How it works? It is for free. Um, I'm Azure announced that they wanted to make it free for 12 months. So you can use any of the cognitive services. I think up to 5,000 API calls per day for free for 12 months. Oh, good. Oh, I'm keen I to think, try. I think that's it. Yeah, but it, it, it's quite a lot. Yeah, because, because now I'm using your account. You pay for that, right? And when I deploy in Terraform, I use my account. I have to know the price. Yeah, as long as you don't make more than 5,000 calls per day, I think that's the number. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. So I think Azure really wants to people get uh, on the bandwagon and start using it. Yeah, because it, it makes life of um, the developer 
the developer doesn't need to know machine learning. It's just like out of the box. Yeah, at least to have like some fundamentals, right? Wow, yeah, some fundamentals. model and uh, yeah. So, but okay. you don't need to develop a model. Yeah. So now what are you doing? You are on the previous screen, you are like grabbing the information from the JSON files we have. And now the Terraform is initializing the, the back end. It's installing the providers, the Azure RM providers. Come on, Pedro, your internet is slow today, right? <laughs> no, I think this code is pretty, pretty slow. <laughs> Uh, no, it's it's going. I don't know if you press enter if it is stuck, but I think it's. Right. I think we can talk about what's going to be deployed. You're going to use Azure Container Instance. Yes, we're deploying Azure Container Instance. If you show the code, Pedro, please open the folder Terraform ACI ACI a second one. Yes, Terraform ACI. Look the main main code the main. Yeah, that's okay. Using Terraform to deploy, but the service itself is a is a serverless container. Right. Uh, uh, a here, serverless container. Uh, here, here I'm defining the name of the image. Uh, one quart of CPU, 300 megabytes of memory. The parts. You you can deploy ACI using Docker Compose, like we we have a video here on Azure Tar. And we can deploy on Terraform because I'm working like 100% uh, of the time with Terraform. I think this is the easiest way, but for you, do uh, Docker Compose could be easier. Yeah, that's fine using um, using Terraform and um, just make sure that you can pick, you know, CPU and memory that you want. And it's a serverless thing. Once we stop that, you don't pay anymore. You don't have to be running 24 hours. Is dynamically you can create as like Azure Functions you can just create that and pay per consumption and for depending of the CPU memory that you pick. Oh, so what's going on here? The Terraform is not initializing. Oh, I right, done. There we go. Okay. It's probably going to run now and create. Uh, this, is is. this is created the container with the Terraform uh, apply. Happening. Yeah. Now yeah. it's the last step, isn't it? Yeah, this is the last step. Oh, no, that's the, that's the container group. It's not. That's the ACI. Uh, container group is the ACI. Yeah. yeah it's creating oh, it to no. take no, about two the last, That's the last step. <laughs> Yeah, because on your prepare you created you know the container registry and the and the service container service service itself. And right now, yeah, it will be on the next version. In the current version, we are creating a resource group and the container registry only. Okay. Okay. Pedro was showing at the beginning that he created manually the 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 cognitive service. Yeah. And then. But in, in a few in a few days, I will make available it created by Terraform. I'm seeing here on the documentation, it's Azure RM Cognitive Account. Should be easy. It is probably very quick to create. So and it takes about two minutes. Pedro, if you would like to show your uh, Azure Portal Console, or to show uh, at this point, I think it should be loading the, the, the container image. Yeah, for sure. Which is... Uh, is this first one? The first one? Yeah. Yep. And click on containers uh, on, on, on the central blade settings containers. And click on logs. Ah, oh, it's running. Uh, click on logs ju just to see how the image was pulled. Yeah, if it's running, probably uh, it's running. Go, go back. Go, get the... go go back to the terminal just to see the 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 URL. Oh, yeah, fit. it's still not. You don't have it a response here. Yeah. Uh, 
just go back. If you go back on the portal, there is a public IP there that you can open uh, on the overview. Uh, we, we are using, actually, we are using a, a URL. Yeah, you can, yeah, we yeah, have a fully qualified, a fully yeah, qualified. Yeah. Uh, but, but 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 wait, uh, no, wait for the Terraform because the Terraform has the proper URL with everything we need. Uh, the output. The yeah. Yes, exactly. There you oh, go. There you go. Go. And the route and everything. Are you ready? Yeah. Boom. There you go. All right, now it's running on a ACI. It exposes a um, URL where you can access the um, the application. I'm using four five thousand just for demo purposes, but I will probably use it like a eight part eighty. Uh, this is uh, let's include an issue. George has suggested me to use a reverse prox container with Envoy and let's uh, let's encrypt. Let's do this for the next video. Yeah, what like and then you can like to to show have HTTPS. Yeah, and also to uh, to run Flask in production, what they uh, recommend is to uh, run a WSG server like um, Unicorn, and that will handle uh, the traffic and the Flask will just run handle the uh, the back end. So let's do it. Let's do another image. I have an image. Say, say the man, yes, this is cool. And this upload. Cool. And one one thing I saw, Pedro, I wasn't aware. You have deployed the cognitive service on the central US region, and we are in Australian East. So on, on my next the the uh, the, uh, the ah, version, okay. I will do everything on Australia to be faster. Oh, okay, it, it works. We have a Dell and an Apple computer, and both are render are recognized. Pedro, awesome. I would like to pray, play to change that thing about brands to other things we can detect. I hope I, I can yeah, use why that not? code. Why yes, not? I'll play with that. And for who is watching, when you are when it's over, you can use the make clean to delete the resource on the cloud and you have to confirm the things, right? And you can see the git repo here that at the at the top here, um, where the code is at the moment. Yeah, but um, the code is oops, I closed. Uh, the cloud is on github.com slash frdvo slash azure cvcicd. Yeah, you can put on a video description and then yeah. make it easier. Where do you I, I like Pedro profile picture. Yeah, pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's like a TV reporter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's see if the thing is. I think they have a ask. Oh, no, not yet. The, this one, you put a confirmation to. Hey, hey, you have to put a confirmation to destroy the both Terraform deployments. It's going to clean all the local files as no. well as the. No, oh, just the no I, I could implement that in the future. This is a good thing to do. Let's include on the issues on our repo. I do everything right. <laughs> yeah, and just for for people watching, like you can use ACI, or you can use you know Azure Functions, or or you know AKS to deploy this. Depends where you're going. ACI probably is the easiest way to show that running. Um, but there are multiple ways where. You pretty much what I have to deploy is a simple web application just to upload the image. Or you can just integrate that with existing application as well, Pedro. And at the end of the day, it's just calling an API, passing like an image, getting the payload, the, the response back, and doing something with that. Yeah, that, and, that's the basic, the basic pattern. And then I'm just doing... Um, for um, image, you can use that for sentiment analysis to uh, translation. You can send something in English. You can back come back in Spanish or Portuguese, and you just whatever you can use for for lots of uses. Yeah, and there are many many cognitive services that you can run locally as well. Means that you can run the service itself in a container in your environment. Yeah. And the only thing that you send to Azure is just like the billing. 
you know, it's just like getting the logic from Azure. They they give a container and then you run on your environment if you want. And yeah, that's we... good for running on premise or. Oh, but how good, Pedro? Thanks for th thanks for work with me and that thing. Uh, it become really cool when we start to do the GitHub thing, you know, and pull requests, you know. This is funny, and let's improve this thing. Let's do something cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great job. So, great job. And then everyone that's interested in learning about Python, Flask, and also CI/CD, just go to GitHub and clone the repo. Ah, or if you have something to show, send a message to us, talk to us on Twitter at Fernando Ronick or what's your Twitter, Pedro? Uh, it's Vela and Pavio. Uh, it will be on the Azure blog and okay. talk to us uh, to, to publish something cool. Uh, and coming soon, I will make, I think, an article or a video explaining how to do this three tiers thing in an easy way. And uh, how good. Thanks, Pedro. It was really cool to work with you on this project. And it's been cool. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, George. All good. Thank you, guys. Very amazing, amazing job. Great effort. There you go. Thanks for sharing Thanks that. You. And you'll catch up soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.